What's the coordination number here? Yeah, six. Because the aluminum is connected to six things. And let's find the oxidation number for the aluminum. table, we know each fluoride has a negative one charge, so that's a negative six overall. And from the periodic table, we know each sodium has a plus one charge, which is plus three overall. But we know that since this is the full coordination compound, it should be neutral overall. So this has to be plus three, so we get three plus three minus six is zero. Coordination number here? Four. Coordination number? Four. Now remember that each of these ethylene diamines is connected twice. So six? Right. Okay. Remember that each ethylene diamine is connected twice to the cobalt. So that would give us um, four connections overall here. So we just have to memorize which ones connect twice. Is so that the only way to know? Yes. Because that's the reason. Of the formula, it yeah. Like the same. That's right. That's why we looked at that table. Okay. That's why we had to look at that table that had the bidentate ions. So the two bidentate ions in there that you might be expected to have memorized were the oxalate and the ethylene diamine. Okay. So you should just have memorized so just that memorize oxalate and ethylene diamine are bidentate. Okay. Let me draw what this would look like. That might uh, make it a little bit easier to think about this. We can start moving into geometry here now, too. So this has a coordination number of six. Do you know what the geometry is going to be when your coordination number is six? Octahedral? That's right. Um, we can draw that like this. So here is what the full complex ion would look like.
Now, we need to um, have some devices here for drawing three-dimensional shapes on a two-dimensional page. So we can start using some devices that are used in organic chemistry, where that comes up a lot. I don't know if you've seen this convention before, but the convention is that when you draw a bond as a wedge, that means a bond that's coming out of the board towards you. So I drew these as wedges to show that these are bonds that are coming out of the board towards you. And dashes mean bonds that are going into the board away from you. So that's a little bit of a desperation device that will allow us to draw this three-dimensional figure on the two-dimensional page. So those are very useful devices uh, for drawing the molecular shapes here. And a bond that's neither wedged nor dashed is in the plane of the page. So these two are in the plane of the page, but these are two are pointing towards you, and these two corners are pointing away from you. You have to be able to visualize this. So this is a good way to draw, in fact, I think this is the best way to draw octahedral shapes. Mm -hmm. So octahedral shapes have six corners. The, the octa is kind of misleading, because octahedrons don't have eight corners, they have six corners. If you actually connected all the corners here, this would be an eight-sided figure, although that's a little bit difficult to oh, visualize. It's, sided it's got sides. eight sides, um, because there's basically a square pyramid on top and a square pyramid on the bottom. The pyramid on the top has four sides, and the pyramid on the bottom has four sides. But we can just memorize that, opti that the octahedral shape has six corners. We don't need to be able to, to visualize the sides. Okay, um, so now we can get a better sense for how these bidentate ligands work. Notice that this um, has two donor atoms, the two nitrogen donor atoms. I'm not going to bother trying to put in the charges inside of this. Uh, I'm just trying to get who's connected to who. Um, so, and you can see here that it does not make sense to, so it makes sense to count each of these as contributing two coordination numbers, because they're connected twice. So it makes sense to say that overall the coordination number here is six. Yeah. And also, that um, if you said the coordination was, number was four, you would think this might be, say, tetrahedral or square planar. You wouldn't get the right geometry. Right. The whole point of, find, by the way, why do we care about the coordination number? Because that tells us the geometry. The whole point of figuring out the coordination number is to get the right geometry. Well, clearly, we want to count each of these ENs as two connections, because that will give us the correct geometry. Again, we just memorized that EN is the abbreviation for these ethylene diamines. Okay, so at first glance, it would seem like there's four things connected to the cobalt, but we know each of these have two connections. So two times two is four, plus two is six. Okay, now eventually we shouldn't have to draw the picture every time to just get the coordination number. We should just be able to look at this and say two times two is four, plus two is six. Okay. So that would give us a coordination number of six. So we, um, we do need to know about the ethylene diamine and maybe the oxalate uh, bidentates mm -hmm. as well. Now, we also want to try to find the oxidation number here. Now, one thing I didn't mention in order to do that, um, so what's the charge on ethylene diamine? Well, if you look at the table, I think they suggested that it's neutral. Yeah, it doesn't have any. Yeah, ethylene yeah, diamine no is neutral. But the oxalate does have a charge. That, that would be important if you were trying to figure out its oxidation number. Mm -hmm. But the ethylene di so you can see the ones that have charges, they give you the charges in this table, and the ones that are neutral, they don't. Okay. So the ethylene diamine is not contributing any charges. So let's see now if we can work out the oxidation number. Well, we're only going to be able to do that if we know what the charge on this is. Neutral. So it's the charge on this? Neutral. Now, you might be thinking of NH3. No, but in the chart, yeah, it gives NO as being neutral. But this is NO3, oh. which is different. After all, here we have NO, which is neutral, excuse right. me. But here we have NO2, which is negative. So different numbers of oxygens can give you different outcomes. Okay. Now, they didn't put NO3 in any of the tables, possibly because this is something we're already supposed to know maybe from the first semester. This is a common oxy, oxy anion. So either of you know what oxy anion NO3 is? This is the nitrate um, anion. That's, uh, that comes up so much mm -hmm. that it might be something we're just expected to know from the first semester. Because it's the conjugate of nitric acid. Nitrate is the conjugate of nitric acid. And if, if it's the conjugate of nitric acid, what's the charge on a nitrate? Because the conjugate of this 
after this loses a proton, it would be NO3. Okay. okay. So they didn't actually give you all the oxy anions. There's some oxy anions that you might be expecting to have memorized from last semester. There should be an earlier chapter in the book that has the, the oxy anions, like sulfate and phosphate and nitrate, so you can look those up if you need to know their charges. So here we're just expected to know that NO3 has a negative one charge. So now we should be able to figure out the oxidation number. So we can just find those like that, yeah, like by just adding mm -hmm. the proton or subtracting proton, like in acids? Or like uh, well, if you know that this is a, uh, a, a, a monoprotic acid, okay. how, um, however, some uh, you have to have that memorized. For H example, there's also, there's also diprotic acids. So it's going to be the negative two. Yeah, sulfate ions are negative two charges. That's right. So if you remember what the acid is, you can remember what the charge is. Okay. Right. 